Electronics, and today I'm going to show you guys a safe and more effective way to install Push to Talk on your Johnson Ranger. I've had many in the past email me and say, hey Terry, you showed the Viking 2 Push to Talk, how about the Ranger? Well, I hesitated to do it because if I followed the original instructions how Johnson did it, it's really not safe. And I wanted to come up with an alternative method, and I've got it. So let me show you what it takes to normally put push to talk in a Ranger, and then I'm going to show you what D-Lab came up with. So here is a Johnson Ranger 1, and this model does not have push to talk installed. I don't know why Johnson didn't just do it to begin with, because in their manual, they show how to install push to talk. And if you don't use it, there's some things on your Ranger that will suffer. Number one, this operate switch. You see a lot of people advertising looking for these switches because they wear out. Because every time that you want to talk, you got to go to phone and standby. Phone, standby. Every transmission, okay? So that wears out the switch, of course. And if you look here with the paint, you can see wear marks, right? I've seen some of these where all the labeling is just gone and there's this gigantic ring from somebody in here turning it, right? And your knuckles are hitting the paint and over the years, it wears it off. And now, not only do you not know what the functions are, now you got a crummy looking Ranger, right? So that's one advantage to installing Push to Talk. So if you want to install push to talk in your Ranger per the Johnson instructions, what you'd end up doing is installing a Potter and Brumfield relay right here. It's an open frame relay with a 10,000 ohm DC coil and then you wire into section A of the operate switch. Here are the destructions. They're pretty clear but if you take a look right here you're going to see a problem. There's a 300 volt supply through a voltage divider that goes over here to your mic jack. So guess what happens when you're not transmitting? You have approximately 300 volts sitting here. Obviously it's going to be lower, it's a voltage divider, but you're still going to have several hundred volts going into your microphone. And that's why I didn't present this initially because I didn't want to do this. So let me show you what D-Lab has come up with to remedy this. Normally in the Ranger you would see a platform sitting here. It's the keyer platform. This model didn't have it, which is nice for installation of push to talk because you don't have to deal with it, right? But you still have to deal with the original operate switch. Alright, so now if you look over here, you can see this rectifier tube. That's a 6AX5 and behind it is a 5R4. A lot of guys have been solid stating this, right? They say, well, the 5R4 puts out this boiling amount of heat, whether you're transmitting or not. And the 6AX5 rectifier can easily be replaced by a couple diodes, right? So if you did that, and this guy was gone, now you've got some more room here for possibly a plug-in push-to-talk module. And that is what D-Lab has designed. It's called the K1 push to talk module. And it actually plugs right in to the socket where the 6AX5 tube was. On the base, this has the diodes to solid state your low voltage DC. So now I've solved that issue and it gave me a mounting location for a compact push to talk circuit. Alright, so as I stated before, the base of the K1 module has the diodes to rectify the low voltage DC, so that's handled. And that freed up other pins on the socket that weren't in use, right? So now I have a 6 volt AC filament line, of course I have ground, and then I had a couple unused pins that I'm going to show you how I utilize them in a minute, alright? So the 6 volt AC now goes in to the K1 module and powers it and this relay will be wired 
into the operate switch for the push to talk operation. A pretty slick way of doing it. So it was obvious that Johnson always had it in mind to put push to talk into these Rangers. It still blows my mind why they didn't just do it because here is your mic jack. It's that famous two pin Johnson. Pin one's your audio and pin two is for push to talk. But in this radio, it's not wired up. So that's the first step. To gain access to that mic jack, you gotta move the shield. There's already a terminal board landed. So you pretty much just have to hook up pin two to the terminal board. You add a little point .005 disc cap to ground. And then we need to chase a wire out of here, snake it around, and go up to pin four of the 6AX52 base. Pin four is not used at this time. Well, it will be now. So I got this purple wire hooked up to pin two of the mic jack input. There's that little 005 to ground. You follow that purple wire, he goes under here, around there, up there, so on and so forth. And it's connected to pin four of the tube socket. That is the only wiring you have to do underneath the chassis. So let's go topside. All right, so at this point, we can do the initial test on the K1 module. It's plugged into the socket. I have removed the 5R4 tube because I really don't want to deal with high voltage at this point, okay? I just want to make sure this guy's working. So first off, we'll check the rectifiers on the base and make sure I'm getting approximately 400 volts low voltage that that old 6AX5 tube used to provide. So here it is. Here we go. Oh, there he is. 417 volts. Okay, let's get that meter out of there. We verified that the low voltage DC supply is working, so we don't need the 6AX5 tube anymore. But most importantly, does the K1 relay pull in when I key the D104 mic? Let's take a listen. Yep, she's a key in. Next step is to wire the K1 relay into the operate switch. Now for the heck of it, let's go back and measure the voltage on the mic jack and see what the hazard is that you're exposed to using this system versus the old original Johnson system. Microphone's disconnected. Here is pin two. So you see your resting voltage, right? 17.3 volts. Now, for the heck of it, I'll key this up. And this is simulating your microphone doing its job. You can see our voltage goes to zero. And that would simulate you're keying your D104. Next step in the process is to wire the leads to switch for wafer A. It's a little bit tricky, but it can be done. Just take your time. You're going to follow the instructions in the Johnson Ranger manual. But I've actually simplified it. I'm going to cut to the diagram right now. We'll unplug this module. So if you look at the schematic, I've actually color-coded the leads showing exactly what terminals they go to, okay? So it should be fairly simple to follow. Now, here is another K1 module, and it has those color-coded leads, all right? So I'm gonna unwire the terminals, we're gonna swing these guys onto them, and then the push-to-talk system will be ready to test. We're gonna do this one step at a time. So if you look at your wafer switch, this is switch for A, pin 12 is over here. So this is one, two, three, and so on and so forth. So the instructions say the first thing you do is disconnect the jumper from pins three and five, okay? So we're gonna do that first, and then we're gonna connect the green and white leads to pin three and five, and that is going to the normally open contacts on one set of the double pull, double throw relay on my board. All right, so the easy ones are done, and that was pins three and five, pretty accessible on the top of the radio. 
they go to the green and white leads, which goes to one half of the double pole, double throw relay on the K1 module. Then we got these three leads, okay? So this black lead is actually going to go to the two black leads that are in pin eight currently. We're going to disconnect those, solder to this black wire and heat shrink it. Then the blue and red will go to pins six and eight. So once again, we've got to do all this underside, but it is doable. There's the two wires that came off of pin eight and I'm soldering those to the black wire that is going up to the K2 relay. Got the heat shrink tube there, we'll put that on. The last one we have to connect is pin six. If you're referencing an older Ranger manual, you will not see any reference to clip six of SW4 wafer A. My diagram, you'll see that I am using clip six. That's because in later Ranger manuals, they decided, ooh, we better connect to that so that it shuts down the screens of the output tube. And that's what this wire right here is. This is a white wire with a green stripe. And if you follow that, it goes back to pin three of your 6146 and a 30K resistor. You need to connect to that. So what I did here is I just removed some of the insulation and the red wire going from my K1 module solders to that. Now all the wiring is complete. Let's give this thing a test. Here's the initial test after the successful installation of the K1 module. Now the tune-up procedure of the Ranger is going to be different than the manual specifies. You no longer have to go from standby to phone to key the transmitter. You just leave it at phone if you're in AM operation. Okay. Then we go to grid, turn on your zero, you can peak your excitation, get the grid where it needs to be, adjust your drive, etc. Then we'll go over to plate, key the transmitter now with the microphone, leaving the operate switch alone. Dip your plate, right? Modulation now. There's my resting current and I'm talking. So there it is. The little K1 module is doing the job. It's super quiet and it eliminates the wear and tear to your Ranger. So the operate switch, your paint, all that will stay intact because now you've got the D-Lab push to talk system installed. And as you can see, it was not too bad of a job. So I am in the works of developing a step-by-step -step procedure, including some of the original pictures from a Ranger and schematic information to make installation foolproof. So one thing I need to mention about the little K1 assembly, it only measures about three inches high by one and a half inches wide. So you could actually install this in other transmitters like Heathkit DX60. You would simply make yourself an octo socket for it to plug into and wire it up. And if you don't need to use the rectifier function, then don't. So how cool is that, huh? D-Lab delivered. You guys asked for the procedure of how to install push to talk into the Ranger while well, I upped the game. I actually gave you a much safer method and a plug-in module with simplified instructions rather than putting in a relay that you probably can't find in the first place and exposing yourself to hazardous voltages. So at this point, guys, I've got two more of the K1 modules built. I have enough materials to build three more. And if this is successful, I'll buy more materials and we'll keep this going. So let me know your thoughts on this update to the Ranger. So it's very cool for the fact that now there's an off-the-shelf plug-in module that not only gives you better push-to-talk capability, it also replaces a rectifier tube and removes some of the heat and stress from the Ranger. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you again. Terry here, D-Lab.